Welcome back to the channel. It's Rob from Bison Track here. Today I am going to be doing a video that is a long time coming, yet it's a really simple, straightforward question that we get from a lot of people. And that is, what are the differences between our Thor.1 suit and our Thor.2 suits? Now, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you there are two different types of Bison customers. There are those of you who wear an air vest when you ride or race, and there are those who don't. And very simply put, if you are going to wear an air vest, your option is going to be the Thor.2 because it has our air hide air vest compatibility, which allows you to use six different types of air vest inside the suit. Now, conversely, if you're not going to wear an air vest, the Thor 1 is probably going to be your choice. But we have a lot of people say, well, if I'm going to wear an air vest in the future, can I run the, an air vest inside the Thor 1? Do I have to get a Thor 2 now? And can I run a Thor.2 without the air vest? So we're going to address those questions, but first I want to talk about the features of the suits, what you can expect with the suit, and uh, maybe some subtle differences between the Thor 1 and the Thor 2. So first let's talk about the outside construction of the Thor Point 1. Now on the outside of the suit, we'll start at the top, you have a neoprene collar with rubberized bison branding and a rubber zipper bridge with Velcro on it. If you flip around to the back, you're going to find uh, Keppertech Kevlar, as well as neoprene on the back of the neck for comfort. That neoprene is also on the inside of the collar uh, to prevent chafing. On the outside of the shoulders, you have these rubberized and plastic uh, shoulder protectors. And the reason that these are here, not only on bison suits, but pretty much every suit on the market, is to protect the seams at the shoulder from slide damage and from, from coming apart. A, a very marginal amount of impact protection. Really, the impact protection is on the inside, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So continuing down the back of the arm, you're going to find a accordion panel behind the elbow for, uh, for mobility there, replaceable elbow pucks, titanium forearm slider, and then a stingray panel that goes over the main seam on the forearm. If you flip back over to the other side of the arm, you're going to find that we have neoprene cuffs all the way around, YKK closures at the, at the forearms. This is genuine Keppertech Kevlar stretch material here. We have a Kevlar panel on the outside of the sleeve as well because if and when you low side, you tuck your arm underneath you uh, just by nature, that's what happens. And this Kevlar can be frayed in a slide. So we put this here to protect that seam, protect that Kevlar in the most vulnerable area on a low side. We also abbreviate the Keppertech. We bring this cut up a little bit here. You can see there's kind of a swoop in the forearm because uh, that, that brings the Kevlar inside your arm a little bit more, and again, prevents it from slide damage. So as we go back up here to the top, you're going to see that we have one, one main YKK zipper. This is a big metal YKK zipper. Uh, on the back, you have a speed hump, which can be had in different sizes. This has a zipper in the top and a hollowed speed hump pad, which means you can put a, a water bladder in there. The straw comes out here, there's a small little tether here on the front that the straw goes through and uh, you can use that for hydration while you're out on the track. Now we don't have the uh, pouch equipped in this suit obviously but that does come with our suit standard so uh, keep that in mind. The back of the suit you have accordion panel again behind the shoulders on the Thor one down the sides and into the back so you have full back panel mobility. This this back panel pretty much floats on you while you're on the bike. I mean you have uh, this accordion which stretches in all areas and really allows you maximum mobility and comfort. Continuing down the suit onto the hips, we have stingray panels again over that hip seam to protect that seam in a slide. On the back of the legs and into the groin, you have again the shoulder Kevlar Keppertech material. And then we have these cuffs, just like on the arms, we have these neoprene cuffs that go inside the boot. Now the reason we do this is it's a lot more comfortable to have this inside your boot as opposed to leather stuffed in your boot. Uh, it's thinner and also this go fast be safe text on the cuff here that grips the inside of the boot a little bit helps the suit kind of stay in place. Again YKK zipper down here on the ankle. Around on the front of the leg you'll find that we have rubberized bison traction inner knee grips here. Those are standard titanium knee plates that can be had in black or silver. 
You do get knee pucks with all bison suits, plastic knee puck standard. You have accordion panels over the knee, that's pretty standard for mobility. And now I want to move to the inside of the suit. So we're going to open up this YKK metal zipper and inside you will find a mesh, fully removable mesh inner liner, uh, CE level two padding in 15 different areas around the body. So the shoulders, the elbows, the forearms, the tailbone, the hips, the knees, and the shins. All that armor is removable. You can replace it in the event that it uh, is damaged. And uh, you can also upgrade it. We do offer force field armor as an upgrade. One last thing, there is a back protector in this suit standard. Again, that's a CE level two back protector, but it is a soft shell. You can remove it in the Thor one by just pulling this flap up, sliding the pad out. If you're using a backpack style back protector, like a turtle shell, I would go ahead and take that out. Don't stack the two pads, take this out and wear that backpack protector in its place. Again, you can upgrade this pad with a force field or D30 armor just by sliding this out and replacing it with the appropriate shape armor. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up the Thor 1. That gives you a good idea of the basic construction of our suits. Now I wanna talk about the Thor 2 because again, this is pretty much the same suit with some subtle differences. The first difference is going to be on the inside. You're going to see a 3D mesh bright yellow inner liner. And what the 3D mesh does, if you wanna come in a little closer and look at this, you have multiple layers of, of mesh here that are basically creating an air pocket on your back. That's going to allow for increased airflow, it's more comfortable, and it's also more durable than the standard mesh inner liner. On the inside as well, when you talk about the air vest compatibility, we have zippers on each side. We have Velcro in the upper shoulders, which I, I can't get to it here but on the hanger, but there are Velcro panels up here for the installation of air vests. You have a LED indicator panel on the arm. Behind that panel is a Velcro. And you undo the Velcro, put the LEDs on the inside, reapply the Velcro, and run the cable up the back. That cable then comes through this port here and attaches into the back of the vest. Now, if you're not running an electronic vest like that, we have slots here on the chest. So three slots on this side, three on this side, and what those slots allow for is a tether style vest, like a Hit Air or a Helite or Duhan vest. You can check out our blog at bisontrack.com. 2021 Air Vest Buyer's Guide is there, and that will explain those vest types. But essentially, you would install those vests behind the liner, run the buckles, there are three buckles on the chest, you run those all out there, buckle them, and then zip your suit up, and you would have a tether port here on the lower stomach. That cable comes out and attaches to your bike. That's going to pull the firing pin for the CO2 cartridge. Now, um, this suit is not equipped with that because we weren't planning on using a tether vest. This is my son Carter's suit, by the way. He's the one behind the camera. So uh, anyway, we knew we weren't going to use that, and so we don't have a port there. Now, this suit also has some Kevlar Keppertech you'll see coming around here. We do this on some youth suits, and we also do it on female suits. And the reason for that, it allows more expansion here. So on a female with a larger bust, it allows her to be a little more comfortable there in the chest area. And with a youth, it allows them to grow. So Carter's going to continue to grow over the years, and this type of material is going to allow the suit to expand a little bit and get him more life out of the suit. Now again, we go into the back, you'll see that it's pretty much the same stuff. You've got um, accordion panels and in all the appropriate places and, and still this up here. Now, uh, on the later model suits, this one uh, actually is an earlier model Thor 2. And on the newer ones, we have increased the accordion panel. This leather accordion panel is going to go up around the shoulders onto the back to replace this Kepper Tech. And uh, you're going to get a lot more expansion in the upper shoulders when the air vest deploys. It's going to be a lot more comfortable in the shoulders. But even on this one, you'll see we've increased over the Thor 1. You have more expansion in these areas. And uh, we also added an expansion panel here on the upper arms. So now on the later model, you have an expansion here on the upper arms, again, to allow the shoulders to go up and make you uh, give you more room for expansion there and be a little more comfortable. One more difference on the inside of the Thor Point 2 is behind all of these Kevlar panels, or behind all of these accordion panels, rather, we are installing Kevlar 
Keprotec material. So everywhere that you see an accordion panel, you have this Kevlar material behind the accordion. That just allows for uh, extra protection in the event that there is a slide through situation or some damage. So um, that, that is another benefit. So here's the thing with the Thor 2 compared to the Thor 1. What you're looking at is not only air vest compatibility, but the Kevlar material behind the accordion panels, also the 3D mesh inner liner. So the differences are really subtle. And what I tell people is, yes, you can use a Thor 0.2 suit without an air vest in it. Would you want to do that? That's up to you. Remember, this is going to be a little bit steeper investment than with a Thor 0.1. Conversely, you cannot use an air vest inside of the Thor 0.1. The expansion panels just aren't there. The construction is different. So yes, you could put an air vest under this suit, but once it deploys, it's not going to work the way it should and protect you in the right areas. So I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, again, this is just a high level overview of the differences between the Thor 1 and the Thor 2. If you have specific questions, please send us an email at info at bisontrack.com or give us a call at the number below. We're always happy to help. As always, I appreciate everybody watching this video. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already and click the bell for notifications because we have a new video about every two weeks. If there's a specific topic you'd like us to cover, please put that in the comments. I appreciate it, everybody, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Go fast, be safe.